Jesus came to this earth as the light of the world to shine his light upon us so that we could be lights in a dark world. What we're about to study in the Gospel of John is the last few verses of John chapter 12, and it's the final public appeal that Jesus makes. These words of Jesus that we're about to read is actually the final public appeal that he makes to the people. These words are spoken possibly on Wednesday of the Passion Week, just two days uh, before Jesus is to die on the cross. There are some dramatic words that Jesus speaks here that we should really take to heart. And what first comes out of the text is that there are consequences for not believing in Jesus. Uh, let's look at verse 37. We're going to read about four verses here. But although he had done so many signs before them, this is the Apostle John speaking or writing these words. But although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because Isaiah said again, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. These things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of him. John is explaining the people's unbelief in spite of witnessing the miracles of Jesus. And he uses the prophet Isaiah's words to show that God had ratified their choices. When you look at verse 40, it, it almost sounds as if God didn't want them to hear or understand. But what he's saying is that the people had hardened their hearts. They had chosen not to see. They had chosen not to hear. They had chosen not to believe. By their own choices, God had ratified that and sealed them to the doom of their own destiny because they would not believe. Sobering words. These are sobering words. And we need to take to heart the warning that we should always continue to live with a tender heart before the Lord. Three things that come to my mind, or four things that come to my mind when talking about the importance of having a tender heart before the Lord. How do we do that? First thing that comes to my heart is to be filled with the Spirit of God. We need to make it a prayer each morning to say, Lord Jesus, come fill me with your Holy Spirit. The second thing is to be rich in his word every day, to study and to, to memorize his word. and let the word of God come alive to us and will all, always keep us tender before the Lord. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The Third thing is that we need to be quick to obey the Lord Jesus and follow him closely. That will keep us tender before the Lord. And then the fourth thing is to be in fellowship with the family of God. We need to be with other believers that will help us be accountable and to stay on track. So we need to live with a tender heart before the Lord so that we don't bow to the consequences of not believing. We need to believe in him. And uh, to, to sum up this point, where you know there are consequences for not believing in Jesus, very real consequences that speak of people's destinies. It's important to, re to, to finish this point with what we find from 2 Peter chapter 3. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So we believe the heart of God is that everyone would come to know him. And it's so important for us to keep our hearts tender before the Lord. Second thing that comes out of the text is what, what follows in John 12, 42 and 43. Let me read it. And the second thing is, will you be a man pleaser or a God pleaser? Look at the text. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Many leaders really believed in Jesus, but they wouldn't speak up. They loved praise from men more than praise from God. They feared men more than they feared God. It is better to be right for eternity than to be right for just a short period of time. And we see that in this world these days, where people fear men more than they fear God. We need the courage to not fear what people think, to not fear what people say, but to take a stand that will count for eternity in how we speak and in how we live. Will you be a man pleaser 
or a God pleaser? Well, that's, that's an important question to answer. We need to be people who have an audience of one, that, that we are living for Jesus, that the God of heaven sees everything we do, everything we say, and we need to fear him more than man. And then the third thing that comes out is the end of the text, and I'm going to read it, verses 44 through verse 50. Here we find the opportunity to be free from darkness and to live in such a way that we find the way to eternal life. Here's what the text says. Then Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me sees him who sent me. Catch the words that he says here. It, it's, it's reminiscent of what he will say to the disciples in a couple of chapters later. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he's essentially saying the same thing here. He who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness or should not stay in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command leads to eternal life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. So there's two key statements in the text here that Jesus makes. First, in verse 46, I came into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. And that speaks worlds of how we can be people who, rather than staying in the darkness, we choose to step into the light each day. And as we walk in the light, there is an anointing and an authority that can come upon us as we're filled with the Spirit of God and as we walk in the light of the world that there is an anointing and authority and a power to our lives that causes the darkness to scatter. We can be those kinds of people. And I'm, I'm going to come back to, to that in just a moment. But verse 46, I came into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. The second thing is this. I know that his command leads to eternal life. Moses spoke of blessing and prosperity, but only through obedience and hard work. And we're going to finish this teaching with uh, the words of Moses, words of warning. Abundance comes as you choose to sow in the Spirit. Abundance comes as we choose to obey the Lord and follow him in hard work. Jesus said, you'll be blessed as you believe in the light. Walking in the light is the place where you will be blessed. You can be a light in a dark world through your prayers, through your diligence, the word of God, through your presence, the light of Jesus Christ can shine through you with authority, anointing, and power to scatter the darkness and bring light to every situation. That light will come through in the way that you look at people, through your eyes, through your countenance, through your presence, and through your prayers, and through your words. Powerful light that can cause the darkness to scatter. You can bring light the light of the world to every dark situation. God gives us the privilege of choice to do his will. We end up with the consequences of our own choices. It's illustrated well through the words of Moses as he warns the children of Israel with some of his last words, and they're found in Deuteronomy chapter 30. And I might bring some intensity to, to bring to life the words of Moses here. You can just um, imagine Moses, he's, He's got blood, sweat, and tears through the years. He's led the, the children of Israel out of Egypt and le leading them to the promised land. And here's what he says before he dies. He says, for this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. 
in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce you to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you will cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Dramatic words, and you can just imagine Moses with all of his heart communicating those words. So the consequences of not believing in Jesus are very real, and we always and forever need to keep our hearts tender before him. The second thing is, will you be a man pleaser? Or a God pleaser. And then we finish with this. Jesus has set us free from the darkness of sin so that we can be beacons of light for everyone around us. And in these days, as we approach the holidays, this Thanksgiving weekend and as Christmas is coming, I just encourage you to be close to Jesus, to follow him, to be filled with his Holy Spirit. And as you're filled with the Spirit of God, that the Lord Jesus will help you to be a light in every situation. You can be a light in a dark world. Let's pray and just ask God to seal this to our hearts. Lord, I thank you for coming to this earth to, to shine the light of the world upon us. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to see that we need to be having tender hearts before you, that we always need to stay tender before you, that our hearts would not be hardened but that our hearts would be tender so that we can hear your voice and follow you closely. And that we would be people that are fearless in the midst of a dark world, that we would not fear men, that we would not be uh, fearful of what people would think of us, that we would speak the very words of God, that we would speak the truth in love, but that we would speak fearlessly. And Lord, help us also to be people who will walk in the light every day, that we can cause the darkness to scatter through our words, through your expression on our face, through our eyes, through our prayers, through the anointing of your spirit and through everything that we do and say. Help us, Lord, to be a light in these days. Come fill us with your Holy Spirit. Let your word come alive to us that we would be rich in your word and rich in your presence so that people would see the light in the world. Thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of your weekend.